and welcome to a brand new episode of the podcast entitled Couch Potatoes Unite! Exclamation point. This is a podcast based on a blog of the same name because we wouldn't even change our name or our potential theme song and opening credits if we revived our podcast 14 years after it ended. My name is Kylie and I love TV. If you feel the same, keep listening and or checking out the blog at couchpotatoesunite.wordpress.com as you're bound to find some common ground or something you like. For at Couch Potatoes Unite, we're all about the wonders and the unique long-form storytelling of the small screen. CPU, exclamation point, is heating up big time. As the 2015-2016 season comes to a close, we end our calendar year on May 31st, wink wink. We hope you've been keeping score on your favorite shows. We also hope you've been following releases of brand new episodes, as well as new blog entries. And as always, we have several more new episodes on the way. Because the panelists and I live lives behind our podcast, the episodes are still being published once per week in many seasons, kind of like The Walking Dead. So subscribe to the blog or the podcast via iTunes or Stitcher Radio to stay on top of brand new episodes. We have several episodes already published discussing Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, Forever, Game of Thrones, Orange is the New Black, The Vampire Diaries, Gotham, Doctor Who, Downton Abbey, and Marvel's Daredevil. We've taken a look back at True Blood, Ally McBeal, and Futurama, and more episodes are in the works concerning Netflix's Marvel's Jessica Jones, revisits for Once Upon a Time and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and we'll be checking into some of our other regular panels as the 2015 to 2016 TV season wraps up. If you don't hear your show in this podcast format, though, check out the blog. Fellow panelists and I still write reviews, and we're always seeking new panelists, so if you have any interest in joining the discussion, say hello. We have a Facebook page, a Twitter, follow us at CPU Podcast, an email address at couchpotatoesunitepodcast at gmail.com, an Instagram at couchpotatoesunite, and a Pinterest at CPU Podcast. Of course, you can always subscribe to the blog, our YouTube channel, our iTunes channel, or our Stitcher Radio channel and leave comments and reviews. A thumbs up on YouTube or a few handy words on iTunes would help us spread the word, so please consider taking a few seconds to do it. We would truly appreciate it. You may recall that in December of this year, CPU, exclamation point, published a series of four looking back episodes wherein we review a show that has been gone, either via natural end or cancellation for some time, devoted to the original run of The X-Files, the science fiction horror drama created by Chris Carter that aired on the Fox Network from 1993 to 2002. Today, we're around the water cooler to record our fifth and final, for now, episode of our X-Files podcast series, and we'll be talking exclusively about the six-episode revival miniseries that aired from January 24th to February 22nd of this year. To refresh the listener, the series revolves around FBI special agents Fox Mulder, played by David Duchovny, and Dana Scully, played by Gillian Anderson, investigating so-called X-Files, i.e. marginalized unsolved cases outside of the FBI mainstream involving paranormal phenomena. Episodes consist of so-called mythology story arcs devoted to the larger nefarious conspiracy to cover up the existence of extraterrestrials, as well as Monster of the Week episodes, i.e. standalone episodes exploring subjects of horror, science fiction, humanism, and at times humor. For a more detailed plot summary, and or to read or hear other X-Files podcast entries in this series, check out the blog. If you didn't already know, you can click the floating box at the top right of the header, the picture with the TV watcher, and search for any blog entry or prior podcast episode. One of those perks of modern technology. Today, a robust panel of X-Files scholars, including Nick, Sarah, Hillary, and Kyle, will be focusing specifically upon the six episodes of this so-called Season 10. In addition, we as the panel are going to briefly readdress our definitive rankings of what we think the best, worst, and other categories of episodes are, which we discussed expansively in our fourth episode of our X-Files series, now that these new six have been made and aired and added to the list. It should be noted that all of our panelists have viewed the entire series, revival miniseries included, and may discuss sensitive plot points. So, for those of you who haven't watched any of the X-Files, first, you are gravely behind the times, and second, listen at your own risk, as there may be major spoilers. 
Well, welcome back, X Files panel. How are you? Good. Great. Good. Great. Good. Are you excited to talk about these six episodes? Yeah. I'm yeah. pretty stoked. That's what I to say. <laughs> <laughs> I can feel the enthusiasm in the room. <laughs> it's just permeating off of you. <laughs> so, welcome back. What we're going to do, for those loyal CPU listeners who keep track of us and have been keeping track of the X-Files episodes, you know, in the initial episode, I'd asked each of our X-File panelists to sort of think along the lines of one of our typical character questions and decide which character they are in terms of their interest in the X-Files. I actually am going to ask them to revisit this because while we had several Mulders in the room, which would be Hillary, Sarah, and Nick, a Scully turned Mulder, which is me, and Kyle, our Skinner, it's been 14 years since the show ended, and in these six episodes, I think it's fair to say our characters have changed somewhat. Wouldn't you agree? You're looking at the wrong person. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anybody. That's anybody. <laughs> that is an open question, yo. P.S. <laughs> to refresh the listener, also, we have two married couples in the room. Sarah and Nick are married to each other. Hillary and Kyle are married to each other. And Hillary is my sister, so those interchanges might happen a lot. <laughs> okay. So what I'm going to do is revisit the character list and it's actually been tweaked in line with how the characters at least how I perceive them nowadays and I'd like you to revisit it if your character has changed fine tell us if it hasn't tell us that too how would you rate your interest in the show do you want to believe you love everything about the X-Files good or bad and can't wait for more even when your desire to believe is shaken like Mulder, do you watch it because you're skeptical, there are things you believe or disbelieve, like or dislike, and you prefer to rely on science to frame your preference for the show, even though you can't discount your past supernatural slash extraterrestrial experiences, like Scully, do you walk the line of skeptic and believer? Really, watching the show is more about doing your job and protecting those who work for you and like the show. Also, you're always looking for a chance to draw Mulder and Scully back into the fold, like Skinner. Do you watch it because, like you, it just won't die, like CGB Spender, a.k.a. the cigarette smoking man, cancer man, black lung son of a bitch, whatever you want to call him. You watch because you feel guilty for supporting shadowy government types as a means to an end. At least that's why we think you came back, like Reyes. Did you watch but you didn't understand because you're of a younger generation, like Agents Miller and Einstein. Or you didn't watch it because you were a figment of a drug-induced hallucination, like the lone gunman. Or that was confirmation that they were alive. We'll get right into that later. For now, <laughs> my perception is <laughs> they were a drug induced hallucination. <laughs> so you didn't watch it like that, or you were just MIA because you were busy filming Scorpion for CBS, <laughs> like Doggett. <laughs> I wish I was off filming oh. Scorpion. That'd be fun. Although, do he you did watch say that show? He no, he but oh. I'd be getting paid money to be on a show, so that's cool. That's true. Actually, he plays in a FBI guy or yeah, CIA guy. Pretty similar. Role. Yeah, very similar. Yeah, government sure. type. And he said he wanted to be on it. just didn't work out. Well, he was busy. They have a 22 yeah. episode season. There's a lot. Of, I mean, a lot of people wanted, like Vince Gilligan really wanted to direct an episode, but he just couldn't because of Better Call Saul. Ugh, these people. And <laughs> Kyle's launching their careers. And, and then now they're too busy. <laughs> also, I didn't get Michael McKean because he's on Better Call Saul. With I think so. I like that character. Morse yeah. Fletcher. I would have liked him to come back. It would have made sense to bring him back, too, oh. with all the Area 51 references in the pilot. All right. So, so the yeah. character. <laughs> <laughs> wow. We're already digressing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which character do you see yourself as? Let's revisit this. Who wants to start? Well, I'll just get myself out of the way. Well, <laughs> the super fan. I'm a I am a super fan, and I'm super biased, and I'm super self-aware. So, <laughs> with that being said, I am... I was Mulder before, I'm still Mulder now. Shocking. Um, yes, <laughs> shocking. I will always believe. But I was still actually, for the most part, fairly happy with it. I mean, there were certain elements that we'll talk about later that maybe weren't the strongest, but I was still overall pretty happy with it and still want to believe. So, 
That's me, Mulder. I'd say I'm still Skinner. Mostly because I love Skinner, but also I will support Mulder and Scully no matter what, good or bad. Always look for a way to get them back. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Any form of them being back is better than hiatus. (laughs) I would still be a Mulder, I guess. Yeah. You still want to believe, even when your faith is shaken? Yeah, but, uh, yeah, I don't... Your faith, faith is never shaken. Yeah. yeah. And that Pretty could much. be because I'm a Mulder. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm still a Mulder. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all you have to say about that? I mean, the, the good thing is, it's like, like you said, good or bad, even if your faith is shaken, you're still hanging in there. I would still be somewhere between Scully and Mulder. They kind of had a little bit of a role reversal mm-hmm. this season. So yeah, they did. It's, it was actually kind of hard to tweak their character <laughs> descriptions because I think at times Scully was the bigger believer. But I wasn't skeptical walking into it, so I guess I would say I was Mulder when I sat down to watch the six episodes. After the first episode got done, I might have revisited that a little bit, but... Uh, yeah, it was worrisome, but... It was a little worrisome. It was troubling. But isn't it nice that that was the worst of the six? Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's that's what I was saying. The best, it would have made the other ones a little harder to watch. That's true. Uh, I'm, let's continue with the Yeah, let's continue. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I guess I could moderate this. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> well, we can do this one of two ways. We can either talk in general about our reactions. What did you love? What did you hate? Or... One of the questions I asked the panel, since we expansively rated and ranked episodes in the fourth episode of our X-Files series, I asked them to rank these six episodes from favorite to least favorite. And I almost feel like that would be a good place to start, and then we can kind of backtrack to what do we like, what do we hate. For me, easily the best was Curse of the Were-Creature. Which would be number three. Number three, yes. Mm-hmm. Episode three. It's probably the best Monster of the Week episode out of any of them, because it perfectly distills what makes them work, and the <coughs> comedic episodes of X-Files. Out of any of them of the whole yeah, series? Yeah, of the whole series. All of it? Yes. Wow. Just, like, all the <laughs> hilarious moments, and then all the homages to the original series, returning characters, little things in the background, little throwaway lines that, if you're an X-Files fan, you'd know instantly. The Easter eggs were yeah, pretty Yeah, all the Easter eggs, there are so many of them. Mm-hmm. To me, it was just a perfect... And Mulder and Scully's chemistry was so spot-on in that episode. It was great. After that, I'd say my second favorite was Babylon, which is the fifth episode, I believe. Mostly because of the drug-induced mushroom dance sequence, but also I really actually liked the newer agents. A lot of people were afraid that they were going to try to shuffle them into the new show, but I just liked how they played off Mulder and Scully. And you can see how Mulder and Scully have grown and their entire relationship. The new agents being played by Robbie Amell and Lauren Ambrose. Yep, Agent Einstein and... Miller. 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 Also, same thing, like, a lot of little references to the past and everything. Like, if you just told me the plot of that episode, it would sound very generic to me. But it was, like, the character stuff that I actually love, which normally I, I love the just the comedy monsters, but with that one, it was a lot of the character stuff that I really loved. Then after that, Home Again, also mostly because of the character stuff. Which is the fourth. Yep. And then my least favorites are My Struggle 2, the last episode, and then easily My Struggle 1 is my least favorite. Okay. Mostly because threw away, ca- very casually threw away a lot of the mythology in the narration, which I thought did the fans a disservice. Like, I know they kind of just wanted to, like, get it caught up to a point, and so they're, like, the easiest way to do it, but, I don't know, I just feel like if they would have actually put more thought into it, it would have worked a little bit better. How'd you feel about Founder's Mutation? Oh, the second one. yeah, that one would be before the My Struggle 2, yeah. Okay. In My Struggle 2, obviously, I didn't like the cliffhanger so much, especially since a lot of people didn't know if the show was coming back or not. I Like, then we could really be cheated. But it's still better than the first episode of the season, easily. Who'd like to go next? I can go next. Mulder and Scully meet the Weremaster yeah. is yeah. my favorite. I think I have to put Babylon next. I've really struggled between Home Again and Founder's Mutation, because Founder's Mutation, I think, was a better monster of the week than Home Again, because I don't think... They did the Band-Aid Nose Man. I think that story was just kind of there while we're dealing with Scully's well, yeah, mom. It felt a little but I like disjointed. that part of, of the story more than Founder's Mutation, but I just felt like the Monsters, Monster of the Week aspect was just completely separate. They're almost like two shorter episodes. That So I think Home Again was like type of Founder's Mutation for me. Okay. And then the My Struggle. I like My Struggle too, 
obviously better than my struggle one because we spent so much time recapping. I think more than even the non-fans needed, mm -hmm. which is hard as a fan who've seen the whole series multiple times to say that with unbiased, but it just seems like we went into a lot of detail. And like the episode was almost over when we just got started. Yeah. So that was a little disappointing knowing I had to wait another week for like the actual first episode of that one. I agree. My favorite episode was Mulder and Scully Meet the Weird Monster, and we'll go into that in more detail, but kind of touched on some points with what Kyle said already. I'd say Home Again and Babylon, I had a hard time. I kind of went back and forth with those. They're kind of tied for second slash third, <laughs> but they're very different episodes, and that's part of the reason why I went back and forth on it so many times in my head. Like, I was at work today and literally was thinking about it all day long. But yeah, we can get into that more as well. And then after that, I said Founder's Mutation, and then the mythology episodes were my least favorite episode, sadly. My Struggle 2, but My Struggle 1 was probably my least favorite of the new miniseries. Which is interesting, since you usually rate all the mythology episodes highest. And or higher. I mean, just depending. Yeah. It just depends on the season of the show, frankly. But, yeah. Generically. Yeah. So it was interesting. But we will discuss that. I feel like people are going to throw things at me. I said My Struggle 2 was my favorite. Oh, wow. Because I liked it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And then I said Where Monster was second. For the obvious reasons. Babylon was third. Home Again was fourth. And then my least two favorite were My Struggle 1 and Founder's Mutation. I, they're kind of tied. Founder's Mutation upset me deeply, and I don't know if it's because I work with children or I have children or I don't know, but like it was just really hard for me. I felt very sad and upset by it. That has nothing to do with the merits of the episode, but I couldn't put it any higher because of that, so... Yeah, and My Struggle 1, I just did not know what was going on. It really was difficult for me yeah. to follow. Like, all of a sudden, they're like, oh, you're FBI agents again? Here you go. Like, did they not have to go through payroll? I mean, what, what happened? Did they issue them a gun? Or I, I, uh, I think you looked down at the text that Skinner sent them to come back to the office or something, so that even, you were a little more lost. I'm like, well... It was a leap from what they showed, but I think they I don't even see the Maybe thing they it must be, because I was like, why are they FBI agents again? Like, <laughs> can people just like go in and out there? Or? Especially with them in season six, they weaseled their way into cases that weren't there. So, it's so I mean, I know that's a small thing, but I was just like, I think they're just rushing this a bit, but that's my list. My list is slightly different from Kyle's and Nick's, but pretty much, or maybe it's closer to Hillary's because she had them tied. Where Monster is my favorite. Darren Morgan, hats off to you. Thank you for writing a great one. Then I would put Home again because I actually thought the Scully and her mother story and the parallel to William was so strong and their acting was so wonderful and Gillian Anderson hit it out of the park again that that one actually resonated with me a little bit more than Babylon, but Babylon would be next because the ending was so strong, especially for Babylon. Then Founder's Mutation, and it's funny, Kyle, you say Hillary tends to rate the mythology ones higher. I probably do as well, but in this particular series, I liked all of the Monsters of the Week better than the mythology ones. I would then go to My Struggle 2 for the same reasons, and then My Struggle 1. My Struggle 1, I'm sorry, Chris Carter, he wrote the mythology episodes this time and directed them. I'm going to actually make a callback to a comment that Hillary made in one of the previous episodes in the series where Chris Carter, I think, is kind of George Lucasing mm -hmm. some of the stuff in the X-Files. And that was never more apparent to me than in episode one. I know they were trying to catch up the non-fans, but my take on it is if you are sitting down yeah. watching I mean, season sorry. 10 and having not watched any of the nine seasons beforehand, then you you get what you get. You know, yeah. I, I don't think you need a And really, you'll attract non-fans. We kind of talked about this in other podcasts, like with Arrow and whatnot. You will, you will attract fans the non-fans by the people who really are fans by good word of mouth. Right. So you don't... It's so easy to get 
the back episodes of most TV shows. Yeah, yeah I mean, you don't really need to cater so out. much to people who haven't watched it yet. But And if you were like, oh, X-Files is coming back, maybe I should hop on this train. They gave you a countdown. You should be watching this episode today. They did, they literally they counted it ten, down. Top ten list of the, at least watch these ten before you go into it. Facebook that, and Twitter counted fine. it down every day. Yes. Twitter did all 202 episodes. They did. Yeah. So, so. I... And it was confusing. I love Joel McHale, but I was confused by what his... I was, uh, It just confused the people that were already there because it felt like they were trying to cram too much in with all that exposition. And then all of a sudden, he's like... It felt like a tra- Like yeah. When you get past the summary, it felt like I just watched a trailer for the new se- season that's going to come up. Pretty yeah, much. that's all I got. Yeah. I just... Yeah, and I actually really love Joel McHale normally, too. And I know he's a big fan of the show. Like, he sought out being on the show. But I still felt his place in it was a little awkward. I felt like yeah, his cool. his tone wasn't really right. I mean, he's done other... I mean, he's not always in a comedy-type role. But it's still... Yeah, his character was just kind of thrown in all of a sudden. And then I felt like he just wasn't quite the right tone for it. What I think they were trying to do, and it was pretty ham-fisted the way it happened, was to acknowledge the passage of time. Obviously, Mulder and Scully are older. It's been 14 years since both these actors, well, were on the show particularly. It's been eight years since they played the characters at all. And I think what they were trying to do with the Joel McHale character was create a context of the X-Files and the now. He's supposed to be a truther. He's supposed to be a conspiracy I, Yeah, it's pretty much theorist. he's like the modern version of Deep Throat or like a right. modern version of Informer. Somebody exactly. Who's, so putting it in that context. Yeah. yeah. But the problem is that I think, and they, they actually talked about it. A lot of critics talked about it. A lot of you know comment forums talked about it. It's the fact that at the time the X-Files premiered, there was really kind of a culture that this show sprang out of. That culture doesn't really exist anymore. We're post-9-11, we're social media, everything's on the internet, in a cloud somewhere. And so how do you reframe everything? But then they reframed it a lot. They tried too hard. They tried too hard. And how do you feel about the fact that they basically said, oh yeah, that whole UFO thing? Never mind. That bothered me the most, because it's like one line of, oh, there were never any aliens, it's been men, men this entire time, and then they kind of just breeze by it, but it makes no sense watching any of the other seasons. Whoa. Yeah, he's an all-or-nothing type of guy. (laughs) I just, you know, I didn't necessarily hate it. I know probably some people really didn't like it, but I didn't love it either. I was kind of stuck somewhere in the middle, and maybe I need to go back, and I haven't rewatched those two episodes since it aired it will be coming out on blu-ray soon so that'll be be purchasing i will be purchasing it on the day it comes out but yeah i just i was like i said i was pretty conflicted i just i still don't really know how i feel about it now thinking about it i think i need to rewatch it but i do feel though that it it kind of in one fell swoop they did take away some elements that they had spent so much time building up and maybe the problem was that it was in six episodes or really the mythology was just in the two episodes, if they had had more episodes to begin with. And I know that it was a miracle just getting the six episodes to go, but I think if there was more of a full season 10 build-up, like the older seasons would have done, that maybe it would have had a different effect. Instead of just... Well, and they had got saddled with... They, they gave a date for all the mythology, the 2012 colonization, and then with that whole hiatus that going by, they really have to quickly be like... Why didn't that happen? Yeah. If they would have given themselves a date, they would have. They they could have had more to work with. That's what I was having trouble with was the continuity issues, and that's why I go say George Lucas because George Lucas did the same thing from the regular, you know, the original Star Wars trilogy to the prequel Star Wars Star Wars trilogy. Completely ignored things that were introduced in the originals, did not transcend or carry them over to the prequels, and I feel like the same thing happened here. And he's the spearhead. He was the executive producer all nine seasons, so there's really no excuse for it. And if there were a better payoff in my struggle, too, because that was the other piece of it. I like how they bookended with Mulder being the character having the struggle in the first episode and Scully having the struggle in the second episode. But the plot in the second episode 
barely dovetailed the plot in the first episode. Really, the connecting tissue was Scully and whether or not she had this alien DNA. The truth about aliens piece didn't factor in as much until the last moments of the Yeah, because there was some speeches and some monologuing and whatnot. I just feel confused. Like, if somebody was like, hey, Sarah, I didn't have time to watch. Tell me what, what those episodes were about. I'd be like, um, I don't know. I don't, I, it doesn't, it doesn't really stick with me. I agree. I really oh. barely even remember the first My Struggle. I feel like My Struggle 2 was the first episode of the mytho- mythology. So and I don't it couldn't know. finish. <laughs> right. Well, it was like a cliffhanger. Yeah. I mean, like season two. It was a cliffhanger. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was so very it obviously was, a cliffhanger. <laughs> but it was like, it was the first episode of the mythology, because my struggle, I just, I don't know, it caught us up too much, and I didn't like it enough where I just even ignored it in my brain to just enjoy the next couple of episodes. So I, it doesn't land. I need to rewatch it. It might have even been better if they had put the two My Struggles together, almost like, you know, a Redux arc or any of those mid-season ones where there was a, you know, one, then two, then the Monster of the Weeks continued, because I feel like separating them out, yeah, Yeah. their through line got lost, and that's why I think you don't remember it. I don't think there was a lot of through line, but what there was... It's complete. The beginning of it completely evaporated because of possibly, and maybe that also goes to they had to cram it all into six episodes. But I just think there was some ordering problems, and I do know that they actually filmed the monsters of the week in a different order than they ended up airing them. Yeah. But that didn't affect them as much as the two being apart, the my struggles being apart, seemed to really affect those. There was some slight. I forget which one they flipped, but I. I think that's why it was even harder watching the second episode and be like, wait, they're just full back and doing it? Yeah, I think Founder's Mutation wasn't supposed it, to I be think it was or it wasn't, and I can't remember what was supposed to be second. I think it might have been the Were Monster one, and I think they wanted to save it. I don't know how much one episode later helps, but I think it did a little bit breaking up the other Monsters of the Week one, just because it was so good. What else did you like or not like about season 10? I mean, I would just like to go back to what you said. I mean, I just really like to thank Derek Morgan for making such an amazing X-Files episode. Like, it was, I almost, seriously, because I have so much nostalgia with the show. I, there, I mean, there's all different elements in that episode, and it's the most X-Files episode that I have felt like in a long time. Like, it felt like, yes, I am watching the X-Files. And it seriously, it almost made me a little emotional. I was so freaking happy. <laughs> but kind of for the things that Kyle was saying, I just think that that was such a strong episode. The performances in it were great. And I know, what's that comedian's name? He was Rich also... Darby. Yes, but the other guy, too. What's Come his on, name? Man, yes. <laughs> He's such a big fan of the show, too. He wanted to be in it just as much as Joan McHale. And you can tell that... There's obviously some commit to that, but just all of it—the Easter eggs and the episode—and Sally got another dog. Yes, <laughs> Dagu. And the name also from Moby Dick. Moby Dick. Yeah. <laughs> and they referenced that she's immortal, and yes, so they many did. Different things. They brought back characters. They brought back characters that yeah, I think yeah. they killed off, maybe even more than once. And they brought back an actor who is in Darren Morgan. He's in yeah. Humbug. He's in Jose Chung, Clyde Bruckman. Yep. I love to sing that. They and even put Kim Manor's name on a tombstone, which I think we saw that picture yeah. before the, the show came out. Rest aired. in peace, Mr. Manners. Yeah. They showed you kind of what humans would look like to other people, yeah, the, and that was very comedic and funny, how he was like, just the way he phrased everything and how terrible it was. <laughs> I was worried we're Darren Morgan's writing an episode because it's back, and because we want another one of his, not necessarily because he has an idea to write one. But, like, the twist of it is, no, he wasn't a monster, or a human, that yeah. turned into a monster. He's, well, not even a monster. Yeah, just... He turned into a human, which was the monster form for him. Like, that is something that X-Files didn't do in over 250 years, uh, or episodes. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a long time. <laughs> Snake is also immortal. <laughs> yeah, apparently. They're watching the X-Files in colonial times. All right. <laughs> 
Well, and just, like, the, in this whole little revival, Mulder with his, like, depression and losing faith and stuff, and that moment at the end, you know, episode's almost entirely comedic, but for him to have that moment where he just sees something that he's wanted to believe in since he was a little kid, and that cute little moment before he run, Guy Man runs off. And does a bell kick. Yeah. <laughs> does a bell kick. <laughs> I could watch that a million miles. times, by the way. It would never stop being hilarious. <laughs> It's a great episode. That that was the strongest, for sure. Mm-hmm. Oh, I really loved it. Especially the scene with Mulder and Scully in the hotel room where he's essentially monologuing at her, his part, and what she would say to it. Yes. And she's just nodding. <laughs> but it's just, it, it's just so perfectly in character. But Founder's Mutation is is a monster of the week. It I is. It, it could have been in any other season, though just the way it was written and how it just it was... The Monsters of the Week. It had a Wonder Twins element at the end. It did. It was a little weird, but I didn't mind it. Yeah, See, the I thing that weirded it. me out, and this is just like, I want the movie I want to believe thing, is Scully worked at that hospital for like 10 years, and she never noticed the wing of mutant children. <laughs> <laughs> like, she, just as an investigator, you think she'd be a little curious about the shady stuff. She needed to keep a low profile. <laughs> she was trying to keep a low profile, and she was, like, cohabitating with Mulder, and she was trying to forget all of her trauma, Kyle. She lost a kid, Kyle. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I like Founder's Mutation. I mean, I didn't think it was the strongest of the four, but I thought as a Monster of the Week, like you said, it was on par with anything else they'd ever done, pretty much. It's definitely yeah. a lot better than my top ten worst favorite episodes of X-Files. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was going to say, I mean, yeah, if you, I still fun. think that all these episodes are better than, like, pretty much all of season nine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I enjoy I mean, watching season nine still. And yes. Like said this is better. Right, exactly. <laughs> I, I'm a super fan in the room, but I'm, that's, I'm still saying wholeheartedly that the Monster of the Week episodes still feel more like an X-Files episode than, it, than it's been in a while, even that, you know, the second movie, mm-hmm. which was became a Monster of the Week movie, but it was weak. So let's talk about Home again, because... Did anyone else think that was going to be a sequel to Home? Yeah. 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 I think they, I think they talked about it. Hopeful. It was one of those kind of, yeah, hopeful kind of teaser things that they were trying to maybe get some interest in it. But I, it was shockingly different. Uh, <laughs> no incest. No incest. Well, those, those, those boys didn't turn up. Well, no, no peacocks. No peacocks. <laughs> no. That's the one... That's the graffiti trash can man. God. But Scully's yes. mom is dying, and she's fantastic. dealing with yes. mother issues, which com- which actually comes up quite a bit. That conversation between Mrs. Peacock and Scully, there are some things that parallel that a little bit. I don't know. I do think how... there was a little bit of a callback to yeah, it. I, I think I, that was on purpose. Yeah. And I think once they were like, oh, this is going to mess with the fans, they knew they had to name that yeah. episode. <laughs> I actually really love this episode, because it was yeah. about mother issues, but it was also the parallel for Scully dealing with the grief over William, which is something we didn't actually Well, and to Mulder, see. too. And Mulder, too. Because yeah. it's kind of like the what would have been. Yes, yeah. that's the part that I loved about yeah, the episode. That's, yes. That was the strongest part, I agree. Their daydreams about what you know, might have been had he still been around. I think that was something they didn't get a chance to deal with no. on the original oh. show, so I really loved the opportunity to be able to see that and also to kind of speculate. I mean, they, they could have all had a life together in a sense, and they didn't because their lives are so weird. And they addressed the fears of keeping him as well. With yeah, which was also very... Alien or- Whatever. And for the yeah, first time yeah. in all of the seasons of the X Files, we got to meet, though he was on the other end of a phone call, <laughs> Scully's youngest brother. <laughs> yeah. yes. Never appeared before except as a flashback as a child. <laughs> you know, and I wanted more of that, or I don't know. I was like, oh, I want him to show up. Did he not Maybe show up? He didn't. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't. No. Which I thought when she kept asking for him, like they would actually show him. I mean, I wanted them to. They did not. See, for me, like, I love the Mulder and Scully and her grief and stuff, but the Monster of the Week, I felt, was weaker. Like, it was It was very disjointed. I don't think they wanted that to be the main focus, though, of the I, episode. I know. It was more I feel of like they, it was they more, felt like they needed something yeah, else to focus on. It was the, the backdrop, because they, I mean, I, I think they even said in kind of an interview format that they, they wanted to focus on where oh. Oh. their thought process was about some of these past oh. traumatic things in their older age, and I think they did a really... Oh. Good depiction of but, 
both sides. Which is probably why I related to it, because they made, instead of the ham-fisted, yes, time has passed thing, like in yeah, shoving that. one, they actually made yeah. it more organic and natural, like, yes, time has passed, and look at what we had to deal with in all of that time. And where their relationship is at, too, because they're not currently together. Right. They which they split is, up. Which made all the shippers weep with tears. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think they handled it well. Yeah, like I mean, it makes it. sense that they wouldn't be, necessarily. And there's nothing to prevent them from being again. Just right. Saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have silenced the room. Well, I, I was just going to, the last thing about that episode is I'm racking my brains for any other episode of X-Files that the X-File didn't actually weave in with whatever was happening personally in their life. Like, I don't think they ever did it where this... This is just happening in the background. We're trying to solve this X-Files, but this is happening as well. I, I feel like Scully having cancer, this is a big personal thing with her, and it's part of an X-File. It's weaved in better. Like, even Leonard, that's leading into it. So I don't, I don't know. I guess I still don't know how to feel about just having it, like, to well, an A and a B story. Oh. If I recall correctly, she did deal with some stuff with the trash man, trash can man, <laughs> whatever his name was. <laughs> Band-Aid knows man. Band-Aid knows man. Yeah, I don't remember. I mean, it was weak. <laughs> but I do think she was dealing with some of the, the peripheral stuff. It, I think you're right. It wasn't tied in very well. You've also had a garbage monster. Before. We have. <laughs> Are you talking about Arcadia? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's true, but it wasn't quite the same as that either. No, it wasn't. <laughs> so, Babylon. What about Babylon? I love that episode. If you're going to give me the little gunman, do more with them. Well, that was the idea that they were... Because st- ah, when you take that money... Like, you know, when they don't know if they're going to do more after... Well, I'm just saying, because in the, in the interview they said this, but a lot of people didn't pick up on it, is everybody Mulder meets in his vision is alive, even Cancer Man. The, he's there to talk to the comatose Who terrorist said this who's alive. Now? Huh? Who's Who's said Kyle took Chris Carter. Money. It was in all these interviews. Who's after like a, Kyle took his money? <laughs> no, it, was, it was a bunch of the... It was in a big article with all the writers and Chris so Carter. So it wasn't in the episode? No. But essentially, everybody he meets is alive. He's there... You know, well, listen, you were just complaining about them cramming. If they did that, then there'd be more cramming. But, uh, <laughs> all I'm saying is, you can't mean, fault me for thinking we were just a figment. That's all I'm yeah. saying. Well, <laughs> I mean, if weird. you think about it, you know, Cancer Man, and he's there trying to talk to that terrorist who's comatose, so everybody he's meeting is alive somewhere, and Skinner's there, and that was their way of saying they're still out there somewhere, and he's trying, kind of connecting to them. They just, because it was, I, mean, I think, I think it was, was supposed to be... I, spiritual to yeah. a degree. I mean, it was drug induced, but <laughs> well, well, I guess out there certainly. Yeah, but I just yeah the the hallucination quote unquote part. I mean, first of all, hilarious. Enjoyed it completely. Good job, David. <laughs> <laughs> but that was not clear. It was not none of that. I didn't read any of that. I just thought, oh, he's just having a good old time on his shrooms <laughs> that he thought would expand his consciousness. <laughs> so, the only thing, I guess the thing that could give that support is I feel like that was would have been a perfect place to also have Krychek reappear. The fans uh, would love it. But if he's dead and they're yeah, not... Yeah, that's why he wasn't there. He doesn't see anybody that actually died during the series. Oh, so Krychek is forever dead? Krychek is dead. How many people... Can they bring back from the dead? <laughs> well, let's talk about this. I wanted to see Co- Morita Corrubias, but she's alive, so we couldn't see her, I guess. No, I that's the opposite of what he said. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait. I guess I don't get it. I thought it was just Weirdsville. I'm confused. <laughs> Uh, Marina like, kind of left with some issues, so maybe that's why she wasn't there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she just was a fight and ran away. Yeah, she's <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. she's yeah, <laughs> she's dealing with her own set of problems now, and I don't think they're hooking her up with any help anytime soon. So, but speaking of revived characters, though, we saw CGB incinerate <laughs> in the very last episode of. The original series. We've seen thousands of clones. <laughs> but he's also gotten shot a bunch. And he's died like nine times. And I his know. Face was all, I, I ended up not minding it as much as I thought I was. I was saying, yeah, like, once you see how damaged he really was, <laughs> he I didn't love him. so much. I love yeah. him. But I was like, wow, this is really straining my 
suspension of disbelief factor here. How can the man be alive? Now I'll accept it if aliens came and found him. <laughs> well, I think he's... <laughs> Actually, oddly enough, William B. Davis made that very same joke. Okay. <laughs> recently at Comic-Con. There you uh, go. Like uh, to a week and a half ago. So explain where you were <laughs> and what you did. Um, we were at Motor City Comic-Con in the Detroit-ish area, and William B. Davis a.k.a. The Cigarette Smoking Man and Mitch Pelegi, a.k.a. Walter Skinner, were attendees. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, of course, one of the questions people had to ask was, you know, you were kind of exploded. <laughs> <laughs> this is a legitimate question! <laughs> but he kind of had the same reaction of it, because honestly, the biggest thing that both he and Mitch said was, especially when it comes to their characters, they are... Honestly, they said they are really the last to know if they are going to be used. They keep it secret even to them. And I think he was kind of, yeah, he's, he basically said that they were surprised, but then I think he, he kind of made that same joke about, oh, you know, perhaps it was just aliens and his, because he's very different from his character. He's a very sweet person. <laughs> yeah, he basically, I mean, they just, they didn't even know that they were going to be a part of it. And then it just kind of came a little bit later on. So... I think it's the same thing. He just he's such an in, he's such an important part to the show. They were going to bring him back no matter what. I just but. wish they hadn't in the truth shown a skull in flames cuz then it could have been a little bit more like Okay. That's true, but whose fault is that again? That's probably Chris Carter's fault again. Yeah. <laughs> George Lucas. <laughs> it's a verb now. I think he just I mean, yeah, he's just I think he's probably just lost his own sight. On what it is at times. Why couldn't it have been a clone of him in there? It could have been a clone, and maybe if it that is that will a clone, get explained. Yeah, and that gets explained. I could have, I could buy that because I actually needed some kind of supernatural explanation. The one run of the mill one they gave was not plausible, <laughs> so I did not buy it. <laughs> it was again just trying to squeeze too much in, which is what brings me back to my point: as if they had had more episodes, it probably would have come off stronger. Yeah. There's more episodes to come to help flesh this out. That seems to be a go. Yep, that's and maybe bring. That's also something they said. I want Jeffrey Spencer back. Yeah. I kind of want Jeffrey. Where did we leave it with him? He was all full of acid. Or they injected. He testified him? and ran away. Yeah, he was still all scarred. He was all right, right, right. Yeah, I don't. But I'd like to see him confront his dad and be like, "Come on, help me out." And if they can skin graft on an incinerated (laughs) skull, they can fix him. Yeah, seriously. (laughs) Because what I want to see is him and Mulder really actually have a scene together now that their relationship has had. It's come full circle in ways. Yeah. Yeah, maybe they could get along. Wouldn't that be fun? Uh, They kind of started. I'm curious how everybody felt about Monica Reyes betraying 90% of humanity. That was my next question. Can I I just tell you all like like, because you hate her? Well, I think that's. I feel like that's why the writers did that. Because they realized fans didn't like her. So, like, okay, we're just going to have her side with the bad guy and make her more unlikable. I don't don't like her, but but I don't like that either. I don't like that either. She was the cigarette smoking man's henchwoman now. Well, that's what I get. Okay, somebody recap for the listener is what I meant. So, he calls her in and says why he picked her, we don't know. Right? He didn't say. Her explanation was something along the line of, I thought I was helping by putting myself in a position to find out what it is that In other words, so it's almost like she sought it out to a degree. Yeah, and then once she she found out... Like she was being a mole, if you will. And he said, I'll keep you safe. Yeah, pretty much what... Yeah, he said... Virus, if you... Do whatever I say. He, but he was just using her, because that's what he does. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's how he rolls. But isn't well, her... Well, isn't her dysfunctionally go- screwing around with his son. But isn't her <laughs> yeah. helping him how we have the potential for a vaccine, then? Or am I wrong? Technically, they already had the vaccine. It was yeah. all the stuff that they were testing on, like, Scully when they were abducting people. They were already working on the vaccine before he recruited her. Yeah, but the vaccine comes from this DNA strand that some people have and some people don't. don't. So what Scully and Einstein were working on was how to replicate that DNA to make a vaccine for the people who didn't have the DNA. And Reyes, I think, had the DNA. Like, she yeah, was he okay. Yeah, he pretty much yeah. blackmailed her. He's like, okay, you'll be okay yeah. as long as you keep working for me and lighting my cigarettes. And he somehow has the DNA, maybe because aliens brought him back to life, but Mulder didn't. But Scully does. Scully thinks she has it because of what she went through on the original series. 
But that's not been answered definitively. That's just her theory. Yeah. I always liked Reyes, and I know I'm in the minority of this room. I still do. Oh, good. <laughs> Yay, that's why we're married. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think of this until you brought up Cove Rubius. That seemed like the perfect part for her to do. Exactly. Maybe. Yeah, that would have made more Lori, sense. Actually. Lori Holden. Maybe yes. Lori's off to that I can remember Cove Rubius better than Holden. Mm-hmm. I, I know. <laughs> but it's more important. But she was all tortured and like they did well, experiments they black on oil her. They're not real good. Yeah, they yeah. so <laughs> maybe she would black never. Oil is a verb too. <laughs> she's yeah. probably like in Cuba hiding. Yeah, or, I, I mean I'm sure I'm she's fine from that because Kreitzer got more black oil and it seemed to not have a lasting effect on him. Yeah, and it's coming out of every single. Or Honestly, she probably just ran away because she was used by the syndicate pretty badly and then put herself in danger by testifying against them. Which I think what happened with all the people that came before that tribunal or whatever it was, except for well, Mulder they, ran away too for who a time. Were they really hiding? For, I can't even remember because the syndicate is all dead. But yeah. arms of who they used to be still flourish, and apparently Cancer Man doesn't die, so he can just you know start them up whenever he wants to. Well, I'm he just saying. Much said he was the only one left, and that's how he had control of the virus to pick off who he wants to live and die. Really, sure. there so is they one. pretty much said the syndicate's done with. But, but they also explore that, pretty heavily how there's still shady government factions trying to. You and know. there's there's one was it Mexico in Fight the Future? There's in that movie. There's like a member of the syndicate that we see that isn't like in the series. Europe. He's in Europe. Our yeah, Mueller Stahl plays him. Yeah. yeah, he's in Europe. There's an international. I was going to say, I would assume there's still a network. It's just those particular members are right. no longer with us. The New Yorkers is all dead. <laughs> yes. The aliens burn But it out. doesn't mean that he couldn't start it back up, and I think that that's kind of what he was trying to get across. I mean, he pretty much has the ability to do whatever he wants to do. And chooses to retain all the power himself, because so, he is him. Ray is just like... Is gone now. I don't She's know. just like stupid as usual. That's my opinion. I don't know where she. <laughs> so, she, just, she told her that she was working, and then she Sully couldn't believe decisions. it, and then she disappeared. Yeah, they they didn't That's actually. Not, I did not get that. No, right. I think they did. Not that I love her, but I think this whole piece did a, a serious disservice to her character, and they didn't tell well, her. That's where pretty she much went. even what Scully said. Pretty Scully, because she pretty much told Scully you would have done the same thing, and Scully was like, "No, I wouldn't." Yeah. <laughs> like, who are? Do you even know me? <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's why I didn't like it because what we know of Rey is that didn't seem like within her character at all. She was very helpful. She was very protective of Mulder and Scully. She was very compassionate. I think they were just trying to add a shock factor in some way. That was the wrong way to do it. We had a whole episode of the cigarette smoking man trying to get Scully on his side. Yeah. Uh, So we've seen, we, like that. Yeah, he does that. The words are backed up. I wouldn't have done it. Yeah, Yeah. and that's one of my favorite episodes. She's saying I wouldn't have done it, and we know she wouldn't have. It's not just her saying it. Scene. I think why I liked that episode so much was that like Scully was seeing everything come full circle like somebody gave in to him but I didn't and now I have to clean up this mess by making this vaccine to do all these things even though I underwent yeah. these medical experiments. I thought it was that was good closure for me of like kind of her journey not closure because her journey's not over but I liked it and I liked her in the hospital scenes. And I liked her with Lauren Ambrose. I think what bothers me the most on that uh, that final episode is, like, the timeline. Yes. Because it's all, like, all of a sudden all, it's happening all over the world, and then in a couple hours they have to make a vaccine and then get it dispersed globally. That bothered me, too, but like, that, it didn't make that, a, that if I you really think about the logistics. the six-episode truncation That's, thing. I still bring that back to that. Yeah. I think they could have They wanted to make more. a powerful episode. They wanted to go out with a bang. It's obvious by that cliffhanger that we've already brought up like six times. Yeah, it is like murky like at the end when they say like, oh, this vaccine will work on everybody except for Mulder and then we need our son's DNA for him specifically. Like, I don't know. It, it, to me, that, that didn't make sense. I think it just goes back to maybe they should have, maybe they should have made my struggle too, the actual two-parter and like flushed that they should, out. They should have flushed out the Nicholson, virus yeah. and the motivation for cigarette smoking man wanting to kill 90% of the world. I mean, he said like, he has a blurb about us over the planet or something like that. But I mean, it doesn't really go into it. 
So consensus is the Monsters of the Week were better than the Mythology episodes this time. Well, we have six episodes, and in my opinion, we really only have one Mythology yeah. episode. So I don't... Ignoring the first one? I mean, there's only a couple things that yeah. connect to my struggle, too. And I understand, but it's technically a mythology episode. I mean, we didn't mention... It's the mythology episode where they debunk the rest of the mythology. <laughs> yeah. 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 Never mind about Well, we got a new character that we have not even brought up. That girl? Yeah. Was I thought she awesome. died. So she died. Well, she died at the end of the episode, so she it really did. didn't... I didn't feel like it added anything. Unless the aliens found her, she died. <laughs> Do your rankings of these six episodes. Now, Kyle's already mentioned that the Were Monster ranks among his favorite of all time now, correct? Yes, easily. Do any of these six episodes factor into any of your other rankings? Not yet. Mm-mm. How can I compare six episodes I've watched once to the yeah, I have 200 to, yeah. that I've watched? I've seen Jose yeah. Chung from Outer Space and postmodern Prometheus so many times and still love it. I, I, it's hard to say I'm going to like that one as much after I've seen it five to ten times. If anything's going to crack my list, it, it would probably be the Were, the Were Monster one. I'll give you that, Kyle. As of right now, no. I don't know if it's my favorite Darren Morgan episode, especially because a lot of the reasons that it is so good is He's some the, the one who wrote three, that. right? What, did he write three? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Morgan? you hated three, right? What? Wait, what? Oh, That's three? Oh, oh, three. The no, vampire the one. The vampire one. Didn't he write that? Darren he Morgan? might have helped on it, but when I think I of Darren think Morgan it. episodes, I you think, think the ones that like, have Tom a signature Brock, style. Chung, Clyde Bruckman, and the War of Clyde the Cabra Forgers. Cabra Forgers. Oh, that's right. He did do that one. Which Not I three. like that one. <laughs> I think I like that one more than him. So I don't, I don't think, I don't know if this one is... Yeah, he didn't write three. It was a collaboration... Chris R- Rupenthal, Glenn Morgan, and James Wong. Oh, James Morgan Wong Mom. wrote Founder's Mutation. Yeah. So, and that... They wrote one of the other one. One of the uh, one or the other wrote one of the other ones, too. Maybe Home Again. They brought back writers for all six that had been on the original series. Chris Carter did the bookends. Oh, Darren Morgan wrote Blood. Blood! That's yeah. the one I was trying to think oh, of. Oh, that was... He wrote technical. Blood and yeah. Humbug... Yeah. Clyde Bruckman, Cuprophages, Cup Jose Chung, and Mulder and Sky Meet the Worms. Yeah, so, blood. Sorry, not three. Yeah, I was mixing the titles. James Wong did Founder's Mutation, and then Glenn Morgan did Home Again. They each there did it know. by themselves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, yes, Darren Morgan, of course, did Mulder and Scully Meet the Wear Monster. Who wrote and the then Avalon? Chris Carter. Oh. Well, that one was okay. <laughs> but that wasn't part of the <laughs> whole <laughs> arc. <laughs> So and even it? still, I know I was reading some articles that people complained about Babylon that they felt kind. Of, I mean, Sarah kind of said it that the tone it, to some people they took it kind of strange, and some people felt that it was insensitive to the Islamic community. It was a little insensitive. I don't think it was community. meant that way, but that's the way a lot of critics took it, and so they kind of put that episode down a couple pegs because they felt like it missed the mark that some of the other episodes like Founder's Mutation or the Were Monster episode did, so Yeah, I definitely don't think it was meant that way. I think yeah. I also wanted to address something that happened during the hiatus. Yeah. Well, was, I don't think it was intended yeah. that way either, but at the same time you can kind of see, you know, in a post again, post nine eleven world why people might have been irked by that. I was just say, people just like to get irked about stuff, too. Yeah, That's I was going to say, I think that might just be some oversensitivity. I mean, to a degree. I mean, I know where you're coming from, <laughs> but I, I think that if you're already fairly open-minded by yourself, I mean, it's not like people don't say things that could be taken derogatory about any group of people. It's just the way of the world. So. A lot of people thought Founders Mutation was insensitive to people with disabilities, when in reality it was kind of the opposite. Yeah. Saying, this is what horrible things, you know, yeah. could happen. Not letting them be. We need to respect yeah. all life and whatever. Mm-hmm. But a lot of people... Just talking about a thing sometimes is taken as offensive. Which mm-hmm. wasn't why I didn't like it. I just felt thought it was sad. Like, I was just upset mm-hmm. by it. But, but well, a lot of people were posting that the next day, and I was like, well... Well, know. I even think with Babylon, the focus really isn't on the man in the bed. It's on Mulder's journey. Right. And so that's what you have to kind of take into account when you're thinking about the episode. Not so much what the propeller is, but where he goes from when that propeller starts moving. Right. 
So what you're saying, Nick, is that you have to watch these a few more times before you can... Before I can say they're like in your any list. of the top ten <laughs> list, just because that top ten list is that I can still really watch them and still enjoy them almost as much or sometimes more than the first time. And I don't know if I'll... I can't, I can't know that. I think Where Monster has potential. Uh, yeah, I have it loaded up on my just, TV, and I've already rewatched it like twelve times. <laughs> so for me, it holds up. <laughs> times. That's, that's okay, probably it's an all-or-nothing type of person. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's that that I judge your being able to make that call differently. <laughs> Yeah, no, I agree that if there were any episode that could... Because I already said, I'm going to have to rewatch it. I still feel like there are stronger episodes than some of the final episodes of the actual series itself. You know, I again, I like Nick, I don't think I can necessarily automatically throw it into any of our previously made lists, but the closest would be the Weir Monster episode because Darren Morgan just... He understands the show. He really does. He, he understands his fans, too. He really does. If we had had a list that was your top ten that you felt were the best, most well-written, I could maybe throw it onto that. Okay. I also, except for my struggle, most of those are probably better than any of the worst ones on each each season, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But like, I could say that. They're definitely, they're good. I, I'm glad they're making more. Yes. They are making more. Mitch said that they have all agreed to make more. They've agreed more. to make more, but at Comic-Con. Comic-Con. It's, it's a, they're they're, they're that, in a right? contract. They said that at Comic-Con, yes. Okay. But he, like, literally, he's like, you. you it's, it's, a, it's a fact. Like, you're going to say it, you're going to see it on the internet. Sorry, no, that's my problem with this season. You get Skinner's there. That's it. There's nothing more with Skinner. Yeah. I, want, I wanted more Skinner. While there's other characters I wanted to see, I got that we only have six episodes. Let's not overwhelm ourselves. But Skinner was a cast member. Yeah, it's such a end. history, and yeah. then he just and he up was in the like... credit. Like I mean, he was noted in the main credits as he was towards the end of the actual series, yes. and they didn't utilize him enough. But that kind of goes back to what I was saying. Mitch said is that he said they were already halfway filming before they asked him back. Before so they, they asked, asked him back, so they kind of threw him oh, in, no. and it's not because they didn't want him there. I just think that they were they still were working things out. And yes, they were kind of, like, Fox was kind of rushing in a little bit. Of course they were. And, <laughs> and he said that's kind of like, I mean, hate to go back to the second movie, I want to believe, but he said that's the same thing that happened they with that. They cut the budget, apparently, like, right when they he started s- to film it. He said he had no had idea he was even going to be in it until they were halfway through filming that movie. And he said that was one of the biggest things with that movie is that you know, with X Files at this point, you kind of need the money to make the story because it's it's grown that large. People know it now. It's been around for so many years, and they didn't do that with. They just figured we're rebooting X Files. People are going to go see it no matter what it is, and that's going to be it. We don't have to throw as much money at it. And that was a serious. He said, "Yeah," which actually, and he literally that said makes me the words. like that movie more because, like. Before I blamed the filmmakers, like, oh, they just completely botched it, because I thought, but no, they had to alter their script heavily to account for, we can't film, like, hardly any action sequences, we don't have that much money for special effects, so we can't really have a monster. I mean, he literally said the words. I think we all can agree that that felt the least like the X-Files probably more than anything else. I mean, he... They they basically said it themselves. So, but it was interesting to hear, yeah. As of right now, because they haven't gotten all their ducks in a row, when they want to bring back those really important characters to the fans, they don't always do it. They don't always know they're going to do it right away, is basically what he was getting at. So we know they're writing the next round. Do we have any details? Did they share anything (laughs) as far as how many there might be or when it might come out? Uh, They said 2017, 2018 year. Okay. But that was that was about as far as it went. Okay. <laughs> well, it's the um, next they talk, question. They, talk, they talked about some of their favorite episodes. Oh, what is it? Because someone asked him quite candidly what he thought, and and William B. Davis was kind of like taken aback. Like he's like, honestly, I can't really pinpoint it. Maybe that's an age thing. I don't know. But <laughs> Mitch said, "Home." He was like, he's he basically still thinks that it's one of the best episodes 
to date, just the whole episode, the way it was written, and so on and so forth. And William B. Davis kind of like almost rolled over on his side because it disturbs him. <laughs> so that's kind of funny. And then I think he said, he, oh, Mitch also said none of the episodes with him are his favorite episodes. Oh, <laughs> well, he gets to say, Papa, I to kiss my ass. <laughs> Which he said. <laughs> <laughs> he said that in his little he said that in their panel together which was very exciting everyone cheered <laughs> how did bill davis react to like, which part her up kids and kiss my ass um he just kind of snickered <laughs> you can tell that he still gets his jollies out of it because you know he said you know unlike david and jillian where they have kind of scripts brought to them they still have to go out and audition for things He's like, it's, it's, it amazes him, because they still see themselves very much as regular guys. He said he, William B. Davis said he was at Starbucks one time, and there was kind of a younger person, younger than us, standing in front of him, and realized who he was, and was just kind of sitting there shaking, <laughs> to the extent that he almost seemed like he was afraid, and it still kind of blew his mind that after all this time, he's like, man, I'm just an actor, it's okay, <laughs> that his character would have that strong of an effect effect on somebody especially just waiting in line at starbucks was he smoking a cigarette <laughs> <laughs> no he did talk about the herbal cigarettes though which was also interesting because apparently he used to be a very strong heavily smoker mm-hmm. but like, by the time smoking. it started he, yeah. Uh, yeah he had quit, yeah. He had quit. Yeah. and so <laughs> and then he bought this. Well, he did the cigarette because he needed something to do because he was just an extra. And well, he, he said in something. his story that he he actually did use real cigarettes in a couple of the earlier episodes, but he didn't think he was going to be on it. He had auditioned for Blevins' role, which only had a couple lines, but he instead got the guy standing in the back, and he thought that that was going to be it for him. And so he was like, "Sure, why not? I'll smoke a couple of these cigarettes." But then after a while, he kept hoping that they would call him back because his re- his addiction was reappearing, and so he knew right then and there that he had to basically start the herbal cigarettes, otherwise his it was going to be all over for him, basically. But he he didn't say a favorite episode. Did he not have one? You know, I think he didn't know. He he kind of just kind of went off of what Mitch said a little bit, but I think really, it, like I said, I think it's more of a memory thing for him trying to pinpoint a specific. He's yeah, he's yeah, and he's been ill. There's nothing to say he's watched every episode. That's true. Yeah. No, I mean, and this isn't the only thing he's done in his career either. So well, that's that's the thing though, because a lot of I mean, they're rec- they're most recognized for those roles. Mm-hmm. Mitch actually said in their panel that. He basically still goes to auditions, and if people, like the casting director says, you know, I re- you were amazing as Walter Skinner, I loved you in the X-Files, that he said sadly most of the time he knows that means he's not going to get the part. They only yeah. see him as Because that. he's too, Typecast. he's pigeonholed. Yeah. The, he said the only time that didn't happen, because he did talk about, they, they talked about other shows, like Mitch talked about Supernatural, mm-hmm. and Jensen and Jared. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> yeah, he said they're very cool dudes. He had actually just seen them two weeks prior, I guess. And then he said Mark Shepard is a dick, but don't put that on social media. Oh. He was kidding. He was so oh. <laughs> Seemed nice to me. <laughs> he was kidding. He's, right. he's a very nice person. Well, he is the king of hell. He said the only time that it didn't happen was with Sons of Anarchy. Kurt Sutter had said to him that he loved him on the X-Files, and that's why he wanted him on the show. But he actually gave him... A big part in Sons of Anarchy. Completely different. Completely like, different for those who have watched Sons different. of Anarchy. White supremacist. Yes. <laughs> Way different from Skinner. He was on Grey's Anatomy, too. He was. Yeah. He's done a lot. I mean, he's done. Um, yeah, he's done things. lots of things, but he's, you know, he said you'd just be surprised at how often. Because we still have to go out seeking work, whereas David and Jillian don't have to. But a lot of the times, if they say that, that's going to be the end result unfortunately yeah it's kind of a bummer david's still doing aquarius and jillian's still doing the fall yeah hannibal, hannibal ended yeah hannibal ended though they so say they might make a movie in another two years of hannibal yeah okay. they're all willing to do it and she's especially since her arc was just kind of crescendoing so they're very very busy so they said the biggest the biggest obstacle is just scheduling which was kind of the obstacle with the miniseries, which was part of the reason why it was a little shorter. I mean, I know they were test driving it to see if people were still going to have the interest, but... Test passed. (laughs) (laughs) Think people are interested. (laughs) With that said, is there anything else you want to say about the X-Files miniseries, the six episodes that we watched? 
I would just say I wish it was 13 episodes. No. <laughs> or 10. I don't know. I was happy with it. The you were six, happy with it? I think I they could have fleshed out those mytho- like what they wanted to do with the mythology and it wouldn't have felt so like out of left field. I'm hoping they'll flesh it out in the next round. I just think it could have been a British season, yeah. Yeah. Like, 8 to 10 episodes. I feel 8 to 10 as well. Yeah. Well, I think I a couple more would have been even just more wiggle room for them. They could have managed their time better with that first episode also. Well, and next time, don't recap anything. <laughs> Jeez. People, if you're sitting down to watch the X-Files... After this much time. They should have watched the actual X-Files. I'm just saying. First or just listen to our podcast. Or least. listen to our podcast. <laughs> so we could clue you in a little. I mean, we, we really did recap. We did. We did an excellent job in under six hours. Please listen to them. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> so, when season 11 comes out, since that's a win, will you be watching? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Duh. Would you recommend <laughs> the X-Files revival season to others? Yeah, because yeah, I still think it's better than a lot of yes. other sh- stuff on TV. Uh, well, <laughs> whatever faults I listed, it's still good, and the characters are still amazing. Even on those two mythology episodes, there are still great character moments. And it's still very well acted. Would you written. recommend it to fans, Mostly. non-fans, or both? I would tell non-fans to just start from the beginning. Yeah, I was going to say non-fans, it'll be a little so. weighty. I was going to say, I would say that with most things, though, I because I am a true fan. When I go to watch something, I become a true fan. So myself, I'm a completionist. I have to start something from the beginning. It connects that way, too. Well, yeah. That's the, only, that's the only right way to do it. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, so. I would. I would tell people please watch the original nine before you sit down to watch these six. Just because these six make reference to the original nine so much, I think they would be lost if they the the first episode take that apart from the other five. You probably won't be lost. We were all lost, <laughs> so we were all struggling. But the other five pretty heavily rely on references, and then there's two episodes. Where Monster and Babylon that are a lot of in jokes, which won't be funny to you if you don't watch the first nine seasons, pretty much. I will say it'll be nice to watch those episodes without commercials. This is the first time in a long time I you've had to watch them with commercials. <laughs> I know, but well, did you actually sit down and watch them on the TV when they aired? I watched them online, so it wasn't even as many commercials. I mean, if anything, you might get a little, if you're a non-fan just coming into it, even still might get a little chuckle out of David's shimmy shake in Babylon. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. Because that's, that's entertaining by itself. So. I think we covered everything, right? I think we did. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It sounds so, like we'll be coming back. And we'll definitely come <laughs> back, especially if there's a season 11. But until that time, what I'd like to do is thank Hillary, Sarah, Nick, and Kyle for joining me, not only for this episode, but for all five of our X-Files series. We hope you listen to all of them. I think they're pretty good, actually. We were, we're pretty thorough when we covered <laughs> the X-Files. <laughs> so give them a listen, because if you love the X-Files, I think you'll see that we also love the X-Files, and that will make you excited and maybe want to watch them again. We have several more new episodes coming down the pike, as I told you in the introduction. Please follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Follow us on the blog at couchpotatoesunite.wordpress.com. Subscribe to YouTube channel, Stitcher Radio, iTunes. Keep track of brand new episodes. We have new shows we'll be covering very soon. We're going to be revisiting about five shows, five to seven shows, actually, within the next couple of months. And then even more as new seasons keep being released. Until that time, keep listening, keep watching. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye.